What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the threat that I've been noticing for especially around Florida. We're going to be talking about the hurricane threat for Florida this year. So if you guys are looking to see any models or anything like that, other than one that I'm going to start off with, I'm not going to be really showing that. I'm going to be showing some, I'm going to be kind of discussing the media, uh, why Florida this year, especially both meteorologically and geographically, is at such a threat for hurricanes and why I think it is the great, uh, is the state with the greatest threat for hurricanes this year. I mean, it's typically every year because it's a peninsula. It's kind of surrounded by all sides by water, but especially this year, based off of what I've been seeing by some forecast models, as well as what I've been seeing with just the geography of the state, I'm going to be kind of going over that real quickly. But before we get into that, I want to have a little bit of fun right here because this is the GFS that my friends kind of showed me last night, the 18C GFS that has a system starting to organize and develop uh, in the next few days or so, starting in about a week or so, you start seeing the system starting to organize and develop over in the Caribbean Sea as it starts to move through across through Cuba, and then it approaches Florida as a Category 1 hurricane before making landfall near the Tampa area of all places, and then moves through and kind of just uh, starts to uh, bring s uh, some hurricane conditions to the Carolinas and those areas right there, especially areas in the East Coast, as it transitions to an extra tropical cyclone. I'm going to say this right now. It's early June. That's not going to happen. And the reason it's not going to happen, we can cross-check this real quickly. I want to see what the wind shear probability they are looking at is right here. They're forecasting this to be in a pocket of low wind shear right here, which is pretty interesting. And it's expected to develop with wind shear just to its north right there, which unless it's angled at a cor uh, at a correct angle, I'm sorry, I kind of just repeated myself right there. Um, it, that's not going to happen. The wind shear would just easily tear that apart. And not only that, let's take a look at the moisture as well, just out of curiosity. Yeah, there's dry air surrounding it to the west. I don't see why the GFS has this developing or anything like that. And I feel like it's just one of those fun GFS moments being the GFS mo uh, right there. So, yeah, that's the first thing I kind of wanted to go over a little bit comically. But now we're going to go ahead and get into the main meat of the video about why I think Florida, at least for this season, is going to be an especially a high risk for tropical systems to organize and develop over there. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into it right here. What I have pulled up first for you guys right he uh, right here is something that I... Uh, that I presented on last year uh, in 2023 for my climatology course. This is one of the figures that I showed. So what, what is presented here is kind of the climatological trends right here, uh, climate, uh, just climatologically speaking, where hurricanes have the greatest risk of making landfall from where they originate from. Whereas in Texas, you have to originate from the Western Caribbean or the Gulf, climatologically speaking. And same with Louisiana and North Carolina. Typically, Cape Verde setups are best. Florida is a mix of everything. And because the reason I say it's a mix of everything is because it can pretty much come from the Caribbean like Ian did last year. It can come from the Cape Verde like Irma did as well and just move and when it moved through the Antilles and crossed into, into the uh, Cuba made landfall there before impacting the Naples region and causing a lot of destruction to a lot of areas in Florida. So yeah, Florida is kind of because it's a peninsula that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, no pun intended. It's just kind of a mix of everything when it comes to possible hurricane threats. It can originate from the Gulf. It can originate from the Caribbean Sea. It can originate from the Atlantic Basin. All that stuff right there. So we'll have to pay attention to it right here. And now this is what we have right here. What I have pulled up is the storm surge map. And what we're going to be doing through the rest of this video is kind of be going through region through region to kind of look at the greatest threat and where I think the greatest threat will be based off of this, based off of a couple of models that I want to show. This isn't going to be a very model-heavy uh, uh, setup for today's video. It's going to be more of a geographic setup for today's video. And this is, uh, I want to do it this way just so that way I can emphasize, you know, just what the greatest threat is and who is at the greatest threat at a much more clean and a much more clear basis right here. So to start off with, we're going to go ahead and start with the Florida Panhandle over here, pretty much from Pensacola East 
all uh, east all the way around the area of Panama City, as well as a few areas over, just east, just to the west of the Big Bend right here. So here's what we have going on for the Florida P uh, Panhandle right here. Geographically speaking, and this is the storm surge probability on average for the Category 1 hurricane making landfall. And I'll be showing you stuff as we continue to, uh, to go on. But generally around the Florida Penin uh, Peninsula, you're not going to see, at least from what I'm seeing uh, from this map right here, from a Cat 1, a lot of storm surge. If we go ahead and move that up to a ca uh, maybe a major hurricane, yeah, areas around the Apalachicola Bay definitely could see that as the Apalachicola River becomes a delta. And it's a very low-lying area, but generally outside of the barrier islands, you're not seeing too many, uh, uh, too many uh, like big areas of low-lying areas. The bad news is a lot of these islands are pretty populated, especially around the Destin area, uh, around these areas right, uh, right here, Panama City Beach, uh, th uh, that. But it doesn't really move that much further in uh, inland compared to that. Maybe it does in the Panama City over here, in the north, in the north and west bay of the region over here. But overall, from what I am look uh, from what I'm looking at, with at least the storm surge and from ge uh, from a geography perspective, outside of the riverbanks and all that stuff uh, ha uh, happen uh, happening right there, overall they're not at the at the greatest threat compared to other places in the state. The risk is still absolutely there for those of you who live in the barrier islands over here, as well as parts of Panama City that are subject to flooding. Mexico Beach, where I'm looking at. Uh, right here, because that's where Hurricane Michael came pretty close. It's pretty close to the Apalachicola Bay uh, and all that stuff. And this is what we were kind of dealing with when Hurricane Michael was making landfall. Right here is a Category Five hurricane. Uh, hurricane right there. And overall, when it comes to when it comes to storm surge and all that, at least from that perspe uh, perspective, right there. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people at risk for this, but it doesn't outside of the the Bay Area it doesn't really move that much further inland, at least uh, for, when it comes to Category Five intensity right there. A lot of it's concentrated on the Barrier Islands, and it doesn't really push that much further inland because of there's not really that much uh, that much water that's going to be rushing uh, rushing in uh, through parts. Uh, just outside the barrier islands, unless the surge just completely overtakes the island and stuff like that, which definitely is a possibility for a catastrophic hurricane. But for a major hurricane, not nearly as much like a Cat 3, Cat 2, that setup right there. Not nearly that uh, as much of a situation right there. And also based off of what I've been looking at with the canned sips model, if we go ahead and show you the uh, the kind of the moisture component is uh, right there. Uh, right there and all that. I mean, pretty much all of Florida looks like it's going to be uh, going to be, you know, impacted and all that stuff, at least at certain uh, points right there, but more so in around southern Florida. And we'll get to that in just a second. But overall, from what I'm seeing, the Florida panhandle definitely needs to be paying attention, especially in your low level laying areas. You need to be paying attention and watching out. But overall, not the greatest risk if uh, if you are living inland right there, like if you're living inland of Panama City, uh, Pensacola, those areas right there, but still something to monitor at least for the time being. Although the threat is kind of uh, is kind of greater in this area right here, especially as you push further inland. This is the Big Bend region of Florida where Hurricane Adalia made landfall as a 115 mile per hour Category Three. It weakened before landfall. Thankfully, it didn't cause as much damage as we were worried it might. So thankfully, that's. Uh, what we're uh, that's the, some good news right there. So pretty much the Big Bend. What we're focusing on is pretty much the Apalachicola Bay east to near the Tampa region around sp the Spring Hill area. That's what we're focusing on next, at least from what I'm looking at. And based off of what I'm I've been seeing like with the, uh, with the modeling and all that stuff, I would argue the the Big Bend. I mean, the surge obviously looks pretty bad. I would argue the Big Bend, at least when it comes to hurricane uh, possible hurricane impacts, they're not. I don't think they have that much of a of a risk, mainly due to the hur a hurricane's orientation and that kind of stuff. They didn't. Uh, they had a Dahlia last year, but I don't think this year we, we will be seeing. Uh, at least there's not a good po probability of a, another major Big Bend hurricane. There might be maybe a Category One like Hermine or something like that, in my opinion, but not. Uh, but nothing strong that mainly because of several uh, several factors like the uh, Bermuda High that's going to be moving through. The Bermuda High is expected to be stronger than average this year, mainly thanks to the La Nina that's expected to start cook, uh, uh, cooking up and start kicking in around July or so. So that's definitely something to pay attention. And I, that might push away 
uh, these storms away from the Big Bend, and if it is heading to Florida, either towards the Panhandle or towards areas further south right there. So that, in my opinion, isn't the greatest threat. But what I will say is if we do have a scenario where a lot of stuff ha uh, happens, right, uh, ha uh, happens right there and we do have a big situation, yeah, there's a pretty big risk if that does happen, and if you're if you are further in uh, land, you guys might want to pay attention to that uh, to that as that is a very low laying area right there, and you might need to listen to local officials and all that stuff if you need to uh, leave and all that stuff. And that's pretty much what I'm looking at. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Tampa area. Now just for some context and just for some history, the Tampa Bay region has not had a direct impact from a hurricane since the 1950s. And it's kind of overdue for a uh, for our system to hit. And we've had some close calls over the last 10 years. We had a close call with Irma. We had a close call with Adalia. We had a close call with Ian. We had a close call with a few other systems that I've probably not mentioned right uh, right here that have happened in the past. But the, I, w I am highlighting the Tampa Bay area as a a possibly big risk area for landfall this year mainly due to the, uh, we have mainly due to a stronger uh, uh, excuse me st uh, excuse me stronger sea surface temperatures like warmer sea sur surface temperatures around the area and kind of weaker wind shear as well as more moist air to kind of supplement with that but the question is will the steering currents be enough to move it into the Tampa Bay region, which if it does, that'd be a worst case scenario. Because let's say we have a we have Cat Three impacts right there, boom, a lot of people in Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay, that area right there are going to be quickly affected right then and there by a lot of storm surge because of the hurricane's orientation. Because remember, hurricanes are, rotate counterclockwise. Whenever the, uh, you are uh, in, whenever you're east of a of a hurricane, you st uh, you start seeing this tide push in. And it, depending on the orientation of that, we saw that with Ian, where it moved further to the south, and a lot of the Tampa Bay emptied out, thankfully, instead of pushed in. It uh, d didn't do exactly that. It was just a reverse surge effect in that region right there. But this is an area I'm highlighting uh, because, number one, they don't have nearly as good infrastructure as an area like Miami or Jacksonville or the Tampa, uh, not Tampa Bay, but uh, the Big Bend the, uh, um, and uh, the pan uh, panhandle, excuse me, I can't talk today, in that region right there. So I am highlighting this as a potentially big risk area, mainly due to the orientation and the fact that their infrastructure isn't as up to par as it is in other parts of the state. But overall, do I think a hurricane is going to be making landfall? It's always possible. Listen to your local officials. I'll keep you updated. Now we're going to go ahead and kind of move to southern Florida right here. We're going to move to the southern part of Florida right here because this, in my opinion, has by far the biggest risk of a, uh, of hurricane impacts right there. I'm looking at it. The models are highlighting it right now. Just pretty much southern Florida, uh, the region right there for this year, mainly because you're going to be seeing a, 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 that risk of hurricanes coming from every single direction. We saw this with the climate uh, climatology graph right here. It's pretty much a mix of everything. And... What we're seeing right here is, at least with the surge totals, the Everglades, especially in the areas surrounding the Everglades, are very low laying. The good news is the Everglades are mainly swamps, and they could uh, hopefully absorb a lot of the, uh, a lot of the surge and not really affect as many people. The problem I uh, the problem I have is a lot of areas, especially in like the in around Sarasota South, around P Cape Coral, around where Hurricane Ian made landfall in those areas right there, especially Naples where Irma did. They're very low laying areas and a lot and quite a bit of surge. Even a category one pushes a lot of surge up there as, uh, as well in Southwest Florida because of the hurricane's orientation and that kind of stuff. Now, moving on to like areas like Miami and stuff like that, at least when it comes to surge wise, unless the hurricane is moving r towards it, like pushing right at it, uh, I wouldn't be too concerned about at least with storm surge, but I would also I would also highlight this as a very large risk area, especially this year since the, I've been looking at climatological trends as well as other computer models that are indicating that this could be the big th uh, the big threat area right there for the coast of Florida, especially the Florida Keys too, because they pretty much have a situation where they can be hit with pretty much everything at once right here. So yeah, that's uh, two areas I am highlighting right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and move to the Space Coast very briefly and kind of give my take on uh, this. Space Coast is going to depend. It's going to depend on the hurricane's orientation, its intensity, and pretty much where it's uh, pretty much where it strikes 
uh, in the in the area if it does happen. Because if it goes, if it charges head on, everything like that, yeah, that's not going to be very good, especially if it hits Cape Canaveral where our space station is. But if it is moving along the coast. Yeah, definitely could be some problems, especially if the winds are pushing for, from the north and stuff like that with winds. Surge won't be as big of an issue because of the orientation of the hurricane and the fact that it's rotating counterclockwise. The surge won't be coming from the ocean, so that is some good news. But one area I am paying attention to, this is kind of a high-risk, high-reward situation for Jacksonville. Their risk for a tropical impact is low this year, mainly because of all, uh, some factors like climatology, as well as the fact that uh, that's close to the Georgia coast, which doesn't typically get very much tropical systems right there. I know I, I know it sounds kind of odd and everything like that. But one thing I am paying attention to is the Jacksonville River and just the water surrounding it. Because let's say we have a Cat 3 uh, hitting the region over there. That can cause a lot of flooding, and that's what Hurricane Irma did back in 2017, even as a Category 1 when it was impacting Jacksonville. So this is one of those areas that we need to pay attention to. But overall, I don't see a necessarily big threat because the kind of the geography of the uh, uh, compared to the, uh, to the ocean right there. Because if we go ahead and zoom out to uh, Florida right there, Compared to like areas like southern Miami, Jacksonville, you would need to get a direct hit or have a hurricane push from South Florida to really generate a lot of serious impacts right there. So that's kind of the thing I'm paying attention to right there, uh, right, uh, paying attention to with everything I'm paying uh, considering going forward with this. Florida definitely has a major risk for hurricane impacts this year, and I will keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. And if you want to give us some insight and you want to give us some criticism, you want to help us out with these tropical forecasts, Join the Storms United Discord server. The link to that will be right over there. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel, as always, is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.